Hi, uh, we're going to talk about the basics of Excel here um, in the Mac version. So let's get started. And what I'm going to do is go back and forth between these slides and my um, copy of Excel. So first of all, I'm going to close this up so I can show you what happens when you open it. Um, okay, so um, I'm working with Excel 2011 on the Mac, and you need that version if you're going to continue and do the material on programming with VBA. So, okay, let's see what happens when I open up Excel. So I'll quit it, and I'm going to open it. And the Excel workbook is the type of document we'll normally be working with. So let's just choose that. So here's a new workbook. It's called Workbook 1. And um, you can easily change the name by doing a Save As. A workbook is made up of worksheets. Now I've set up my options so that it opens up with one worksheet as a rule. And this is a worksheet. If I push the little plus down here, I can get more worksheets. So now I have three. And I switch back and forth by clicking their tabs. If I want to give the worksheet another name, um, I'll just give it a silly name here, but uh, it's as easy as double click and type the new name. So why would you want multiple worksheets? Well, um, normally one worksheet is enough, but if, say, uh, you want a sheet for every month, like if you're doing budgets or if you have multiple stores, let's say, and you want a sheet for each store, something like that, then it could make sense. So a lot depends on your situation and what kind of numbers you're going to be working with. Okay, now, um, so these slides are going to be posted um, on the class website uh, where you can get them. And I'm just going through, and these are the things uh, we just showed you. Okay, now let's talk about the controls. Um, on the Macintosh, we have two types of things. We have these ribbons where almost all of the controls are laid out. So um, the ribbon has tabs, and this is the Home tab. And you can see here that I've got all kinds of stuff for um, formatting my, my typing. This does the alignment. Um, here's ones for formatting numbering. Uh, here are things for cells and so on. Now, a lot depends on the size of this window here as far as ribbon goes. If I shrink this up a bit, you'll see that some of the things have disappeared. So um, what you want to do is, if you like using the ribbon, keep it the size, the biggest size. Now, um, there's also menus. So I can do formatting the way prior versions did by using the menu. Uh, and you can see all the common stuff is still here. So you have choices. Okay, now, um, oh, sometimes, like here, uh, you'll see that there's a little down triangle. And this gives me options that I can use. So some of these things, here's a, um, a menu of, of different colors that I can pick for my fill color, for example. Or here, different currencies I can pick. Um, if I don't want to use dollars. So there's more here that meets the eye, and you can, you can expand it by doing this. OK, now the layout here, um, each individual division is called a cell. And the cells are named according to their row and column. So you see the column names across the top, and they're letters of the alphabet in increasing order. And the row numbers go down. So like um, this is cell A2. Here's A1. Uh, here is D5, G2, G27, and so on. And the name is shown in this name box here. Okay. So let's uh, progress through here. Now, oh, one thing I wanted to mention. Um, you should take a look at everything that's in these tabs. And I'll just say right now, you may not have the developer tab. That 
uh, by default does not show up. And we have a separate brief presentation that shows you how to see the developer tab. But basically, these are grouped. Um, so like this tab, the charts tab, has everything you need to make charts. Um, the tables tab is for working with tables. The formulas tab has stuff for formulas and so on. Okay. So we talked about the grid and how the cells are named. And now let's talk about adding some data. So the data in Excel, there's three sort of fundamental types, text data, dates, and numbers. So um, we'll start by working with numbers. And I can just type a number in there, and there it is. OK, so that's easy enough. And, and you can just do that. Um, and if you want to format your numbers, for example, here, I can go to number formatting. Um, let's pick number. And you see it formatted it with two decimal points. I can put a comma in, too, if I want to. See the comma? And I can take it back out. Oh, or not. OK, I'll have to go back to this to get it out. Now, if I want to change the number of decimals, this thing lets me move the decimal point um, to the, well, to add more things after the decimal. And this lets me take away things after the decimal. So here I've got it back to where there's no um, zero showing, no decimal point needed. OK. So play around with the formatting. Um, now, to really tap the power of Excel, uh, you need to use a formula. So what my idea here is I want to fill the first column, say up to row 20, with numbers from 1,000 to 20,000. Now, I could just type them in. OK, but that would not be taking advantage of the power of Excel. So instead, what I'm going to do is say this. I want to, equals means I'm starting a formula. I'm going to use what's ever in a 1, and I'm going to add 1,000. OK, there's 2,000. Well, so I got it, but that was more work than just typing 2,000. Yes. But now what I can do, I'm going to copy this, and then I'm going to paste it. Um, what I'm going to do is copy this. So I'll do copy. And then I'm going to paste down this column. And you can see what happened. I've actually added 1,000 each time. And what's cool is I can start with a different number. So let's say instead of 1,000, I wanted to start with 50 and then add 1,000 in each row. And you see that instantly Excel has adjusted things. Now, one thing to notice is um, the formula for this cell is A1 plus 1,000. And that's basically what we put in there. But notice that this one is A2 plus 1,000, A3, A4, and so on. So why? Because what we're doing is using relative addressing. And what that means is um, when I wrote A1 in here, Excel interpreted that to mean, all right, you're in cell A2, so A1 is the cell directly above. So I should always use the cell directly above. So here in row 5, it's using the cell directly above, which is A4. OK, now what if I um, try something else here? So I'm going to put a 20 in here. Oh, let's put 10. 10 in here, 20 in here. And now um, what I want to do is have it go 30, 40, 50, and so on. So what I'm going to put in here. Um, let's get rid of this guy, is A1. And see how I just clicked it? Plus A2, hit return, and there it is. Now I'm going to copy this formula and then paste. Well, that's not exactly what I wanted. See, I'm using relative addressing. So for each entry, it's adding the two preceding elements. But I wanted.
to always add this guy to the next step to the preceding element. How can I make that happen? Well, if I go back to my formula, instead of a relative A1, I want an absolute A1. I always want it to use the contents of A1. And to do that, I'll put dollar signs. Okay, so let's push return. Now, of course, this one looks the same, but now I'm going to copy and paste. Darn. Okay, paste. And now you can see that it's doing what I wanted. Um, and in each case, it's using the cell above, but the A1, the A and the 1 remain fixed because um, I'm using an absolute number. Now, of course, I can change the contents here. So, like, if I want this to be 50, I can do that. And now it's adding um, each time 50 to the one before. And you can see that happening with these numbers. Okay. Um, now, suppose I wanted to do the same thing, but in a different column. So, let's say over here I put, um, let's say... Let's do 10 and 20 again. 10, 20, oh, maybe I'll do 1,000 just to make it different. And um, now what I want to do is take this formula and paste it here. So I'm going to select all this and then do paste. Okay, now I'm still using the 50 because it's the A1 is fixed. The way to avoid that, um, let's say over here, I wanted to, oops, sorry. Oh, it's easy to um, mess up like that. Suppose I want the row fixed, but not the column. So I wanted to use whatever column I'm in, but the first element. So uh, let's see, that should just be 50 actually. Let's look at this guy. So what I'm going to do is just take off the A, the dollar sign. And now I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to paste it here. Um, having trouble. Oh, you know what? I forgot to hit return. Let's try that again. So I want a dollar sign one plus um, a two return. Okay, now I'm going to copy and huh? So I mean. So copy this, select this, and paste. Okay, so now you see it's using the 10. And the formula is G1 plus G4. So I copied this to use the first element in the same column, and it's using the first element in the same column. All right, this will be continued. <laughs>